How are you, Bill? Awesome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having so us. You're Bill. And who is this? This is uh, the Nightscope K5 Autonomous Data Machine. It's an autonomous data murdering <laughs> robot, is what you're no, saying. No, 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 no. This is the world's first stage diving, crowd surfing Cri robot. <laughs> All right, no, seriously. I know this is a meant for security. So what are we looking at here? Describe physically what you made. All right, so Nightscope's developing technology to predict and prevent crime. Uh, with a combination of an autonomous robot, predictive analytics, and social engagement. And this uh, machine is uh, five foot tall, about 300 pounds, uh, and it can see, feel, hear, and smell. So easy there. <laughs> okay. 360 degree daytime, nighttime video, thermal imaging, uh, gesture recognition. Okay. It can run uh, 300 license plates a minute using an whoa, optical. Whoa, 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 whoa. 300 license plates a minute here. Yep, with an optical character okay. recognition system. And then there's three cameras or four cameras? Four cameras. Four cameras, OK. And then uh, for airports and seaports, you've got WMD threat detection capability for biochemical radiation and pathogens. OK. Uh, but probably the, the key thing here is it's autonomous. Uh, this is intended to roam around outdoors 24-7 uh, on its own, including autonomously uh, charging itself when it needs to. OK, so it can go back and get a charge. Right. It can take video, and it can check license plates, and it can find out if there's a dirty bomb or something. Right, right. So we How would, does it do that? Uh, sensing capability that you would have for WMD. So it, this is like a platform that you can put all sorts of kind of different uh, facial recognition technologies, uh, sniffing technologies, et cetera. And so what's the app? Is there more demo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. uh, I think, if I recall, Jason, yes. you at one point in time wanted to be an FBI agent I did. or an yes. officer. I was going to so join you get the a Nightsco police shirt with Calacanis on the back. Okay, great. And it says uh, precog agent there. Precog agent, <laughs> I like that. So we can um, go arrest somebody who has right. not so committed a crime Right. So when we come over yet. here no. uh, to the Nightsco Security Operations Center, and so we're going to log in Calacanis here. Okay. And so it's your first day on the job. Going to walk you through. Well, I think you probably want to check uh, how the machines are doing so you get a machine and network kind of health status after you've deployed okay, all Okay, so of I these. got six robots in my network. Right. One and of them's out of service. Got it. Uh, we want to make sure that these are roving around autonomously. Uh, and that, the way that works is a combination of LiDAR, a couple lasers, uh, differential GPS, as well as the wheel encoder movement, and uh, some proximity sensors. So it so, knows where it is by GPS. And it also has a laser there scanning. It does a real-time 3D map every 25 milliseconds. It's scanning its environment. Similar to the Google self-driving car it's technology? Analogous, yes. Analogous, OK. Right. And then, so it's your first day on the job. You kind of want to know the historical data of crime in the, in the project, uh, particular area. OK. Uh, and maybe you want to then look at what the actual robot might be uh, seeing at that point in time, so you'd be able to click. So this um, could be six robots or four of the cameras off of one exactly, and some combination. Exactly, exactly. Looking at what's going on in the parking lot or the mall or wherever. Exactly. And then you got an alert status here. Hey, wait, that guy who went by, let's go back one. He, I saw I was reading his face. Uh, is the idea that it's going to read everybody's face and then know where we are? Like uh, those green dots, is that yeah, facial so recognition? Yeah, that's facial recognition. So you would be able to put in, a, uh, depending on the client, a white list or a black list, including the plates as well. Uh -huh. um, so you'd be able to tell if there's a sexual predator in the era, a stolen car, uh, et cetera. Got it. So then we go back over here to check out the uh, alert status. Looks like we're cool on the WMD side. Uh, we got a license plate hit. Uh, and then if you really want to analyze uh, an area, the way, uh, let's say, a Palantir and IBM are analyzing data, they're looking primarily historical data. Right. What this provides is real-time on-site data. Gotcha. And if you can combine that with a uh, geofence analysis of everything you see on the, on the social media front, and you start looking for hints, and you think about what happened after the Boston Marathon bombing, everyone was genuinely trying to help trying to figure out what to tweet, what to put on YouTube, what to put on. If you're the crime analyst trying to figure out where to look, uh, a little difficult. So you're saying if at the Boston Marathon, one of these was on every corner, it would be recording everybody, all the video from four different directions. Right, right. That wasn't a dirty bomb, so it wouldn't have picked up that bomb. And then we're going to test the concept of crowdsourcing security. So to alleviate any privacy concerns and having just the government have all the data is basically if we get an alert that's yellow, orange, or red, or above, we're literally going to live stream everything for that geofenced area for that community to basically follow. So out. on Nextdoor or Twitter, if I lived in right. Noe, 
Valley and we had these on every corner and there's an alert because something happened, it could just tweet it to the Noe Valley Twitter stream. Yeah, if you're a concerned parent, yeah. want to see how your kid's doing at school. Uh, but the end game here is to have a heat map where you could see where, let's say, we've got two stolen cars in the area. Uh, we've got them geotagged, uh, time stamped. Uh, we don't know why there's four people doing this rapid hand gesture motion. Not normal for two people to be horizontal in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, a couple of other uh, feeds, and that way you could actually deploy um, additional uh, reinforcements, either from law enforcement, private security, et cetera. Okay, so this is a prototype we're looking at. Yeah, this is version 1.5. Uh, we released 1.0 on uh, in December. Uh, we'll be deploying 2.0 during the second quarter here, a couple clients. Does this exist in the real world? In other words, is there are somebody ha have this on campus or in their mall yet? Uh, next month, we'll start the beta test. So next month, somebody will have this in a location. At an undisclosed location, yes. At an undisclosed <laughs> location, people are going to see this. Now, how do you convey to an average citizen, you know, the end of days is coming and that we're going to be, the robots are going to win? Like, seriously, like if I walk into this and it's on in my parking lot, it, with the lights went on, is that, what does that mean? Well, you're, you're cool, you're cool. I'm cool? Okay. You paid your ticket, right? Yeah, exactly. No, but if I walk into the parking lot and I see this, I mean, how do you communicate to everybody at the USC campus that, hey, there's going to be robots in the parking lot now and their purpose? So our two initial clients are going to help us with that. Uh, the corporate campuses where the employees would be engaged. And you're touching on probably the key thing here is, the, in the highest sense of the word, that human-machine interface. How do you, at the same time, have a commanding presence, put in uh, a physical presence, you know, first line of defense for law enforcement is to physically be there. I can put a marked law enforcement vehicle in front of your home or your office, and criminal behavior actually changes. Sure. Right? So you put those out there, and we're going to see how do we get that commanding presence, but also have the community accept and engage uh, with that device that will help them uh, get their uh, crime levels down. So if we can prove in a geofence area that we can cut crime by 50%, you may not know this, it affects everyone in this room, crime has a trillion dollar negative economic impact on the economy. It affects your insurance rates, housing prices, financial markets, the safety of your family, the viability of your business. And if we can show that we can literally cut it in half, every mayor across this planet is going to be calling us. And so if this is in the parking lot, roaming around, do you fear that this is going to be uh, vandalized in some way? And what are the anti-vandalization techniques or strategies for a device like this? I mean, if you just put these into, you know, like these things roaming around outside of Madison Square Garden in Manhattan, like you're going to have 10 people knock them over for fun. It's going to be cow tipping. <laughs> Robot tipping? Robot tipping is going to be. Like, uh, so how do you deal with that? First, obviously, we got you on camera and we know who you are. Right. And there's always more than one machine keeping an eye on each other. Uh, and you probably have a security guard. This is not a full-on replacement for humans. You want the machines to do the monotonous, sometimes dangerous work, and maybe computational heavy work, and do the, have the humans do the strategic work. So first is, obviously, we've got you on video. Second, um, you know, we know if it's being jostled or what have you, and there's a piercing, very painful alarm. Uh, they'll put somebody on the ground if you kind of ah. mess with it. Uh, third, it's uh, if it has the um, City of Mountain View logo on it or whatever, it's actually a felony to tamper with government property. Uh, and then we're also working with 3M to put an uh, anti-graffiti coating on it. Oh. It's going to happen. Um, but if it had a police logo on it, you probably, just like a police probably, car, you probably don't want to mess with it. Yeah, it's going to be some interesting YouTube videos uh, <laughs> once we get to that. This looks like it costs a quarter million dollars or something. What, what is this going to cost people if you wanted to put it in your parking lot at your, you know, 500-person technology company you know, campus, you want to have it just per, just in the parking lot to make sure people get to their car yeah. safe and nobody's cars are vandalized. What does this cost? A quarter million bucks? Uh, <laughs> no, not even close. So this would be offered on a machine as a service business model. Okay. Uh, on a triple shift, uh, meaning 24-7 per month, would be about $3,000 a, a month. So $3,000 a month, I get a robot that will patrol 24 hours a day or? 24-7, no pension liability, fully fringed. Uh, you're about four bucks seventeen an hour. So four dollars an hour, I can have twenty-four hour security, with in all directions. So it's yep. much more efficient than a human. Uh, right. So you're thinking we most folks don't know the security industry has somewhere between a hundred to four hundred percent employee turnover rate. Imagine getting a new team every quarter. Um, so the jobs aren't all that great. So what you really want to do is 
and we'll, this is theory, we're gonna find out if for every seven machines you have three guards who are actually doing um, more strategic work and actually managing a part of the process here and, and actually increasing the levels of the capabilities of those, of those guards. Now if I was working at a campus and like, let's say I'm at USC and I'm, it's midnight and I gotta walk to my car across campus and it's a known area, can I just take out my phone and request an escort? Exactly. So you could have a bunch of apps that were end up developing, but one's just a simple follow me app. You need a physical escort. It's two in the morning, like you said, um, and you want to get across campus or to your vehicle. Uh, that could be an escort for you. People are going to be, I think, super um, concerned about this in some way and super uh, be very happy that they have more security. With these first couple of clients, have they told their employees that you know, the Nightscope KS is showing up on Monday for work, and what do the, what do the employees think when they see this? Well, that's why it's called a beta. Right. Uh, so the appropriate folks that are involved uh, know, and then we'll have a little employee Q&A. But, you know, yeah, we're on the cutting edge here, and this should give you a little discomfort. Yeah. No different than when electricity came out, when yep. you know, PC came out, when, you know, the ATM machine was gonna destroy the banking industry, right? Uh, it should give you a little discomfort, but that's what we're going to be doing during 2014 is refining the technology with a couple of clients. We've got maybe yeah. another 30 on a wait list. All right, let me ask this uh, incredibly astute and attractive audience. How oh. many people would love to see this in the parking lot at the mall they go to to make sure their car is secure? How many people would love to see this? Okay. Okay. How many people find this um, disconcerting on a privacy and like sort of level? Interesting. And how many people raised their hand both times? Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Um, people Very confirmed. are confirmed. It's pretty much confirmed, but you think as an entrepreneur, net, 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 at the end of the day, this is gonna make society better. Yeah, so we've got uh, the macro thesis is you've got seven billion people on this planet, we're about to go to nine billion people. The law enforcement apparatus that we have globally will not scale. We can't just keep adding people and more officers, more people, more guards. Uh, and there are 22 million law enforcement professionals and private security guards globally, and there has not been a revolution in the security space. Uh, there's just been basically no investment and very little uh, innovation, and I think we've got a wonderful opportunity here. And given the amount of client interest, uh, we're frankly uh, uh, flooded. You're flooded with requests for this. Yeah. So who, you mentioned private campuses, Who's number two and three and four on the list in terms of categories of people who want it? Uh, categories, so you got the insurance industry. Obviously, uh, we cut crime by 50% in, in an area that's going to cut claims for an insurance company, so obviously financially driven there. Um, obviously, uh, communities, uh, major malls, uh, national art gallery, special uh, opportunities like uh, the Olympics or the World Cup, uh, special events like that. Uh, so we're, we're pretty full up. Amazing. Well, let's hear it for uh, Nightscope and the KS. K5. Well done. I'm sorry, what is it called? K5. 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 Well done. Hey, and this is the final question. Sorry before I get you off here. But yep. what, um, have you go to the stage here. What, what, where will this be if you succeed in 10 years? What will that look like? Uh, it will look like several different machines. Okay. Um, this, the, the technology is on the prediction side and it's on the uh, low speed autonomous technology. The, uh, as much as people like to say hardware is hard, it's not hard if you haven't, if you've done it before, you've done it repeatedly. Uh, I'm an ex Ford Motor Company executive um, and know how to do, uh, know who to recruit and who, what suppliers to get engaged. The concept here is for us to operate less than 25 miles an hour on private roads. And so there's no reason we can't do small, medium, large, extra large, two wheel, three wheel, four wheel, six wheel, depending on what the client might need. It might be even as uh, simple as uh, so perimeter security for a data center outdoors. Right. So it could look like a Segway, like have treads so it can go through mud or whatever. Depending on what the client Border needs. security maybe? Border security is another opportunity, a huge opportunity actually. How does that compare with drones? I mean, I, I, there are some, we're gonna have some drones later in the program. You know, is, are the, you think drones are going to be the complement to this? We'll put a drone in the thing and it opens up and a drone comes out? Never crossed my mind, Jason. Did it really? Did you actually think we about had, putting a drone in the top we, We've of got it? some stuff on the drawing boards. The, the well, well, opportunity, well, well, the opportunity with drones, um, don't have a little great launch pad. You ever seen two officers actually try to get out of their car? Yeah. Open the trunk, try to get the thing 
launch. I mean, yeah. it just doesn't work all that well. Uh -huh. uh, we're trying to solve an actual problem, so I'm not uh, technology specific. Mm. I want to make sure that we're able to cover. So if a client needs uh, immediate uh, reconnaissance aerial, uh, and we can just put something in, something like that, or something much larger. Trace lights out, mini drone goes up, 360s the area, Actually, and comes back yeah, down. The specific request is from the insurance industry, so you've got uh, post-disaster uh, post reconnaissance. Ah. Right, before you go send in the insurance adjuster, and it's not safe, um, probably a good opportunity to do something there. Okay, awesome. Well, this is just completely scary and awesome, and I love it, Bill. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks well done. Jason. Thanks, okay.